What I'd like to do is have a look at the amount of control Seamless gives us over um, imported sheet metal files. So I have a parasolid here. Um, let's open that and open it into a sheet metal template. Um, so we have our sheet metal tools, but what we've ended up with is a, um, a dumb solid and um, it sort of doesn't necessarily lend itself to um, sheet metal. There is no option to um, flatten something like this because it's got no intelligence within the part. But what we can do is if we go to the tools menu and go into um, the option here to which is thin part sheet metal and you choose which face you want to be as your um, initial tab feature you'll see that we have that there and then we've got a number of flanges coming off of here um, so it now begins to start looking like a traditional a uh, sheet metal file um, if i pick up on here you can see that it's recognized it as a bend radius i could change just that one or um, if i go into the variables table you'll see that we have now a proper sheet metal file which has material thickness which i can change to five if i wanted to um, which changes the whole part we have a uniform bed radius i'd increase this to two and you'll notice that it changes here and here so and here so um, that sort of governs that um, we've also got something that um, enables the relief widths and stuff. So all your traditional um, sheet metal tools are there. Um, once we have that, we have the ability to um, do a number of things. We could um, adjust flanges. So if I pick up on here and reposition my steering wheel. So the steering wheel is how we control geometry within the synchronous environment. Um, if I try and change it by or rotate it using the um, torus, you'll see that it's it's failing. That's because we have um, a relationship on here called perpendicular. So that's locking it to be perpendicular to this space. If I turn that off, um, we're free to adjust the angle on here so we can move it down, say, 10 degrees. And that adjusts both of those flanges together. Um, I can also modify um, this area here. So if I pick up on, on this face on the outside, just using a quick pick to um, select the right face. So if I pick up on that, you'll see that the whole flange comes in because we've um, got symmetry and thickness chain on there. So it's got to it's got to um, manage all of that in one go. If I escape, it drops back to um, there, if I look down on the um, top, I could do a fence selection and select all of that as one unit. We can adjust this all together. Um, obviously, it's an imported part, so I don't know the sizes. So if I escape out of here, um, I could put a dimension on here. Um, these are PMI, product manufacturing information dimensions. So that then can get dropped on there. This is a um, blue dimension, so it's um, driven. If I click on here, lock it, it becomes a driving dimension. So you can see that I can uh, modify um, or see the value on there. So if I go back into doing a fence select on here, so I drop out of the um, dimension command, do a fence select. So I could either um, change it here. It's not going to allow me because I have my dimensions relationship on. So if I turn that off, it's going to override that and allow me to change it. Alternatively, let's turn that back on. I can actually drive it via um, the actual dimension. So I can I can use the scroll wheel on here to sort of adjust it, or um, I can just type in an actual value and that will then adjust those in there. Um, so something else, we've got a um, cutout in here. Uh, it should be a hole, but because it's imported, it's not um, picking that up. So it's sort of recognizing that it's a five and a half millimeter diameter hole. 
um, doesn't allow me to, um, if I change this, um, you can see that it picks up all of them, but it's still a cutout. Um, if I want to, I can come in here and recognize holes as well. So we've got these ones and these ones. So if I accept that, they'll come in on the um, Pathfinder. I have to click on here. It now comes through as a hole um, with a depth. I can go into the um, hole options and change it if I wanted to to a threaded hole, um, change the size of it. Um, and it sort of just recognizes all of that as um, an individual um, feature. So likewise, Synchronous does give me the ability if I um, select one of these holes. Um, the steering wheel is shown slightly differently in this fashion. If I click on the tool plane, you'll notice that because of symmetry, um, the coordinate system is shown right in the middle. It will adjust all of those together. If I turn the symmetry off using the S key, um, and um, it's got aligned holes turned on as well, so um, I could turn that off, and then we, we're available to adjust in individual holes on here. Um, so, you know, you've got a lot of control over the model from here. Um, if I wanted to put this back to um, square, I could um, click on this face here and use our 3D face relations. Um, so I could then sort of lock it into being um, perpendicular to this face here. Um, you've got options in here. Um, this is persist, so it, it actually um, not only adjusts it, but it keeps it in that uh, relationship. So if I click on here, you'll see that it adjusts in. And when I accept it, we have um, a series uh, of relationships that we have applied. In this case, we just have the um, perpendicular relationship, and it shows which two planes um, are applied within that relationship. Obviously, the other one has changed as well because that is coplanar, and um, we're sort of then in a position where we can um, do what we need to on here. Um, you know, we can apply dimensions, so I could put a dimension between here and here. And once again, I need to lock this. And you'll see that we have the ability to have um, whichever arrow points is the one that the face is going to change. As you can see, we've got a blue face here to indicate that that's going to change if I switch it to in both directions. We'll see that both sides are shown in blue, which would represent that both are going to change. In this case, if I wanted to, I could just change this size to be 110, and it's just this space here that is going to change with that. Um, likewise, um, as we saw here, I could do a fence selection on this, keeping these holes um, relative to that. Um, I can then click on here and change that, and those holes will stay with that offset from that base. So, yeah, it just gives a quick overview of the capabilities that Synchronous gives to import its sheet metal files.